Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United's likely summer transfers. Jadon Sancho to Manchester United is imminent. We have been told that we will have to pay 81.5 million to sign Sancho. Man United have agreed personal terms with Sancho. Fabrizio Romano said that Man United have restarted contacts to sign Sancho. Jadon Sancho's contract to Man United could potentially be until 2026. That's a five-year deal. And Fabrizio Romano also revealed how much Borussia Dortmund want for Sancho. They want between £77 million to £81 million. Pounds. Jadon Sancho has a gentleman's agreement with Borussia Dortmund to join Manchester United. Manchester United have been set a Jadon Sancho transfer deadline by Borussia Dortmund to get the deal done. Borussia Dortmund want Jadon Sancho's future decided before they go on their pre-season camp on the 23rd of July. We want the deal done for Sancho before next weekend, because Sancho did mention that he wants his future resolved before the start of the Euros. Jadon Sancho has Man United transfer hopes as Borussia Dortmund are looking for replacements. We prefer Sancho over Harry Kane. Bundesliga journalist Konstantin Eckner said that Man United reached an agreement in principle to sign Sancho. We've been in for Sancho for like the last two years, so it has been a long-running transfer saga. We should have got Jadon Sancho last summer, because Sancho to Man United last summer was extremely close. The personal terms had been agreed, the agent fees had been agreed and the contract had been agreed, but the reason we didn't get him is because we was reluctant to meet Borussia Dortmund's 108 million valuation was only willing to pay so much up front. Dortmund made it clear to us last year that we had until the 10th of August to sign the player. We missed out on that deadline, so Sancho remained at Dortmund. Jadon Sancho's endured four years at Dortmund. Dortmund paid just £7 million for him from Man City, and he's got a contract with Dortmund until 2020. But we are increasingly confident that we will finally sign him. Sky Sports said a couple of days ago that Man United were in continued negotiations with Borussia Dortmund regarding Sancho. But he'll be a great signing for Manchester United because he'll fit in our team perfectly. He's predominantly a right winner and we need a right winner. He's still young, he's got a lot of development in him. He will exceed expectations in the Premier League. He will assure his goals. He's very good at creating chances and he's got a very, very good friendship with Marcus Rashford because they do talk to each other a lot. Sancho isn't enough though for Man United. We need more signings than him. Now, another likely transfer 
is Rafael Varane from Real Madrid. Spanish outlet ABC already said that Rafael Varane appears to favour making a move to Manchester United. Fabrizio Romano did recently say that Rafael Varane was refusing a contract at Real Madrid and he said Man United offered Rafael Varane a five-year contract and a higher wage than the one he's on at Real Madrid. Varane did say last season that he's keen on a move to the Premier League. We went in for him 10 years ago under the Sir Alex Ferguson era, but we didn't get him and was prepared to sanction a £100 million move for him back in 2018. I think Real Madrid are demanding around £60 million for Varane. Not so long ago, they rejected a £40 million bid. He said a few days ago that Varane could be available for €40 million. Euros. That's a bargain. He said, we may have been handed a boost in our pursuit of Rafael Varane with Carlo Ancelotti returning to Real Madrid. He said Man United and PSG both made offers because it's impossible for Real Madrid to meet his demands. His contract talks at Real Madrid stalled a while ago. I can definitely assure he's leaving Madrid. His current contract expires next year. He's been a long-serving player at Real Madrid. He's endured 10 years with them. He's made over 300 appearances in all competitions and he's won 18 major honours. Madrid paid just €10 million Euros for him from Lens back in 2011. Now, another likely transfer is Kieran Trippier from Atletico Madrid. Now, apparently, Kieran Trippier has told his England teammates that he wants to join Manchester United this summer. The Athletic recently said that Man United begun negotiations to sign Trippier and he has been house hunting, so quite clearly he wants to leave Atletico Madrid. The Manchester Evening News said not so long ago that we revived our interest in Kieran Trippier as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is unhappy with Anwan Bissaka's attacking output. Anwan Bissaka is the only recognised senior right back at Manchester United. So we need someone to come in to provide competition for him. We was in for Kieran Trippier in the January transfer window, but we called our interest because Kieran Trippier got banned by FIFA for eight weeks for breaching betting rules. I reckon we'll get Kieran Trippier for around £18 million. Um, Everton and Arsenal are also interested. There's been talks of a Hector Bellerin and Kieran Trippier swap deal. His current contract with Atletico Madrid expires next year. Atletico Madrid paid £20 million for him from Tottenham. He won the La Liga last season with Atletico Madrid. He is the age of 30. Another likely transfer is Declan Rice from West Ham. He said not so long ago that Man United will put in a transfer bid for Rice to test West Ham's resolve. The problem is, though, West Ham value Declan Rice at £100 million, and that's too much, and I'm very sceptical Man United would pay £100 million for him. I reckon he's worth from between £60 to £70 million. Declan Rice would be a great signing for Man United because he's well proven in the Premier League. He initially learned his trade in the Premier League, He's still young, he's got a lot of development in him, he's predominantly a holding midfielder and Man United need a holding midfielder. He can also be deployed as a centre-half.
and he'd be a good adequate replacement for Matic, so they are the reasons. Rice said towards the end of last season he's desperate for Jesse Lingard to seal a permanent transfer at West Ham because Lingard's made a fantastic impact since he's gone out on loan to West Ham. Darren Fletcher, our technical director, did say that Declan Rice asked about Man United when he was on international duty with England. Reports came out the other month saying that Declan Rice is interested in joining Man United. And he asked Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw about life at Old Trafford. Rice has got a contract with West Ham until 2024 and he's been at West Ham for seven years. So they are our likely transfers. Um, Harry Kane, it's very, very unlikely he'll come to Man United. Danny Ings, maybe he'll come. Uh, there was rumours about Danny Ings coming to Man United a few weeks ago. We were seeing him as an alternative to Kane. Solskjaer promises Man United transfers this summer. And he did say that we are in the market for a striker. We need someone to come in that's going to give us that clinical edge. Solskjaer said he wants to make around four signings in order for Man United to challenge for the Premier League title next season. And I'm convinced we can challenge for the league next season, providing that we recruit well in the summer transfer window. The summer transfer window opens on the 9th of June, which isn't long now. The summer transfer window will be Solskjaer's fifth transfer window as permanent Man United manager. And you know, he's aware of how much of a, a big transfer window it's going to be for himself and Man United in general because it's very imperative he gets the players he wants to recommend in. Our board have said they'll back Solskjaer with a new three-year contract and summer signings despite the Europa League final loss and Solskjaer being given a £150 million transfer budget to buy around four or five new players. But I am expecting him to get the back and he deserves, reflecting on what the board have recently said. Um, plus we've got John Murtough, he's our director of football. We've got Darren Fletcher, he's our technical director. And he knows the club through thick and thin. He enjoyed two decades as a player for Man United. And we've also got Matt Judge. And Matt Judge has been part of the club for a long time. We are going to offload players in the summer transfer window. Um, I'm expecting us to offload David De Gea. It would be the right decision to offload David De Gea because I reckon now De Gea has had his years at the football club. De Gea's been a long servant. He's enjoyed 10 years at Man United. I reckon he's had around eight good years out of the 10 years he's been with us because in the last couple of years, De Gea has been a liability reflecting on the calamitous mistakes he's made. But a few years ago, he was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances in all competitions and was our number one goalkeeper for so long. Obviously, now he's our second choice goalkeeper because Dean Henderson is our number one. We'll put Dean Henderson as our number one towards the end of last season. Uh, there has been talks of a David De Gea and Jan O'Black swap deal to solve our number one crisis. To De Gea's credit though, uh, last season he produced his best performances after the Everton collapse in February and he responded well to Dean Henderson getting the number one jersey. And he put a very good performance out against Roma in the Europa League semi-final last season, but he did cost us the Europa League final because he missed his penalty. And plus he had 11 chances to save a penalty and he didn't do it. De Gea has like two years left on his current contract. He's on 375 grand a week, which is a substantial amount. 
He said last season that De Gea had made his transfer decision. He's preparing to leave Man United and Man United is set to pay off his huge contract. There's a very good chance he'll go back to Spain. Brandon Williams, I think we need to loan him out uh, so he can gain more experience. And so he can get a lot more opportunities because Williams seldom plays for Man United. Williams is our third choice left back. He played a lot of games the season before last. That's only because Luke Shaw had a couple of periods out with injury. Played two or three games last season. He played in the final game against Wolves, put a very good performance out. Played in the 2-1 defeat to Leicester and he played in the 3-0 win against Brighton in the Carbao Cup at the start of last season. But we'll put Williams on that right hand side he's nowhere near effective on the right as he is on the left Phil Jones and we need to get rid of him because he's always been inconsistent Phil Jones doesn't get in our 11 anyway he's been a long term and he's been at Man United 10 years he's the only outfield player that's still with us from the Ferguson era I think we also need to get rid of Delore permanently He's out on loan with AC Milan at the moment. Matic, we also need to offload him because he isn't one of our first choice midfielders and I've got my strong reservations about Matic because Matic has always been a slow player and plus he's ageing up. Matic has been at the club around four years now. Got him in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. We made a mistake giving him that new three-year contract before the start of last season. Uh, I'm just doing so much, sorry. Uh, Donny van der Beek, I think he needs to go as well because he doesn't get enough chances at Manchester United. I recall Donny van der Beek starting four games in the league last season. Most of his appearances came from the bench. Now, it recently said that Donny van der Beek is set for showdown talks with Solskjaer um, over his future. But not so long ago, it said that we will reject any offers for Donny van der Beek. So reflecting on that, we are reluctant to let him go. He's a good player. He's only enjoyed one full season at Man United. And, you know, there's already rumours of him leaving. There was rumours of him leaving uh, midway through last season. We got him in a deal worth £40 million for my axe last year. And he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Juan Mata, I think we also need to offload him. I don't know if we're going to offload him now in this summer transfer window because Mike McGrath from the Telegraph said that Juan Mata is in talks over an extension on his contract. Juan Mata's current contract expires at the end of this month. But not so long ago, Solskjaer said that no decision had been made on Juan Mata's future. We need to get rid of Juan Mata because Juan Mata doesn't get in our 11 hardly. I've got my element of concerns. You know, he's lost that yard of pace plus he's ageing up. And yeah, um, at the first part of last season, Mata rejected an 18 million a year contract offer to play in Sergio Arabia. Mata has scored like 51 goals in 273 appearances in all competitions. Being with us seven years. Got him in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2014. We also need to offload Anthony Martial. A lot of United fans want Martial to go because he's no longer good enough to represent the club and he was out with an injury for a while last season. But he recently said Solskjaer made his decision on Martial's future. He's told the Glazers he wants Martial to stay for next season because he believes he's got a big role to play. So, there you go. 
Next season is going to be massive for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I think he's aware of that. Next season, Solskjaer must win a trophy if he is to remain Manchester United manager. If things start to go wrong next season, then I think there's a very, very good chance that Solskjaer will be under pressure and then he will end up getting sacked. I think we will eventually sack Solskjaer, but who's going to come in to replace him? I think we need someone in with a proven pedigree and someone who's got that big club arrogance who's going to get his titles to Old Trafford. Solskjaer, we're not going to get a title under him. I'm very, very sceptical about it. <clears throat> Solskjaer has not yet won a trophy as Manchester United manager. We haven't won a trophy for four years. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. There is some Man United fans that are only out. Um, obviously reflects on that Europa League final loss to Villarreal. But there was United fans that were only out prior to the final. But Solskjaer made mistakes in that final. Not all the blame stemmed from him reflecting on the loss. But some of the blame stemmed from him because he got his subs wrong. He brought his substitutions on too late. His first sub came on in the 100th minute. You know, he should have taken Rashford off. He sustained a knock, but he didn't take Rashford off. And he should have replaced De Gea with Henderson for the penalties. I've told you one of my biggest concerns about Ole is his decision making. But I presume there's still a lot of United fans that are Ole in and they believe that he needs more time at the club. I think he does deserve next season because he has made progress in a lot of aspects. And to be honest with you, I didn't expect Solskjaer to do as well as he has done. You've got to say he's done a good job to say the current squad he was left with when he got appointed in as Man United manager. He's been Manchester United manager now for 29 months. It's almost 30 months he's been Man United manager, so that's over two years. Solskjaer has just under a year left on the current three-year contract he signed when he got the job permanently back in March 2019. I'm surprised he's still Man United manager because there's been periods when he's been very close to getting sacked, but the reason he's still Manchester United manager is because he's a club legend, that's what's basically saved him. Disregarding him being a club legend, I can almost assure he wouldn't have been here now. You know? But, you know, the positives regarding Solskjaer, you know, last season, his second full season, he got us a second place finish, it wasn't an achievement. But you can see progress was made from his first full season. You know, last season he got us to the Europa League final. I know we didn't win it, but he still got a credit in for getting us to the final. It was his first major final as Man United manager. Last season went the entire season without losing away from home in the Premier League. That's a record. You know, he got us to the FA Cup quarter final last season, got us to the EFL Cup semi final. Did well in his first full season at the club, guided us to three semi-finals and got us a third place finish. We are into the Champions League for next season, that's very good from a Man United perspective. He has made good signings as Man United manager so far, he has spent almost £300 million. He must have brought around 11 or 12 players in. He's got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he's come in as well. He must have got rid of a good 13, 14 players and obviously academy players have left as well. We recently released eight players and six of them were academy players. But Romero recently got released and Joe Pereira got released. And I like the way that Ole has promoted the youth. So they are the positives. Solskjaer knew when he taken over at Man United it was going to be a massive job despite him knowing the club through thick and thin. Like I've said, he is our best manager since Ferguson because in certain aspects he has brought consistency back reflecting how long he's been with us though he's gained some managerial experience and he has learnt quite a bit on the job but he has got no proven pedigree before he was with us he was at Mulder he won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder but they're not a big club 
and he had two spells with Mould. And before he was at Mould, he was at Cardiff, and his record at Cardiff was absolutely disastrous. He only enjoyed a short tenure with Cardiff. He got Cardiff, relegated Ollie, managed the Man United reserve team for a couple of years, so he did watch some of this team grow and develop. But like I say, you know, Solskjaer's made a transfer promise. He's, he knows that significant investment is needed. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update with today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.